Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 9, lesson 3, Similarities and Transformations. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine if two figures are similar by determining a sequence of rotations, reflections, translations, and dilations that maps one similar figure onto another. Let's learn. Similarity. In a dilation, the scale factor is the ratio of the side lengths of the image to the side lengths of the pre-image. When the scale factor is not equal to 1, a dilation changes the size of the figure, but does not change the shape of the figure. If the size is changed, the image and the pre-image are not congruent. However, they are what are called similar. The following shows some examples of dilations that we saw back in module 8. So. If it has a scale factor between 0 and 1, like 1 half here, our image was a reduction, it got smaller. If the scale factor was exactly 1, it stayed the same size. And if our scale factor is greater than 1, we had an enlargement where the shape got larger. When the shape's getting larger or smaller, then we know that a dilation has to be thrown in to show that two figures are similar. To do this, we need to see if one figure can be mapped onto the other using the same things we did in the previous lessons with rotations, translations, and reflections, but to get it larger or smaller, now we have to do a dilation. If we look at our parallelogram here, here's our original. Let's figure out if these are similar. So a dilation will just change the size, not the shape, which is what makes it similar. So going from EFGH to EFGH with the primes, what happened? We can see that it got larger, it looks like if this was three units away, now it's six units away, that maybe we were multiplying by two. If everything is two times as far, H is two times as far, G is twice as far, E is twice as far, we multiplied everything by that scale factor, we just dilated, it is similar. Then if we look at our final image, our double primed image, it's the same size now, it's congruent to the image we just said, just translated down 8 units and 3 units to the right. So E prime to E double prime, down 8, 3 to the right. Or 3 to the right and 8 down. So are the two figures similar? Yes, because we were able to get one shape exactly onto the other using a dilation and some of our congruence transformations, we can show these two things are similar. Now let's see if we can get our original triangle ABC to map onto our image, our final image triangle here of DEF. Can we get there using translations, reflections, rotations, and since it changed size, we have to use a dilation. One way you can quick check to see if things are similar is checking the side lengths. So AC, that diagonal hypotenuse there, does that correspond with our hypotenuse of DEF? 10 is 2 times larger than 5, so that must have had a scale factor of 2. If this was properly dilated, everything would have to have a scale factor of 2. So AB is 3, DE is 6. Is that twice as much? Yes, it is. BC is 4, FE is now 8, twice as large. So at least this was dilated properly. So we know that we should go forward seeing if we can get there with reflections, rotations, and translations. So if we dilate this by 2, we can get to our next figure, which is right here, our prime figures. It's now twice as large. Then we can reflect it. Finally, we can translate it down and over. So down 10 and over 1 to put it in the correct position. So these two triangles, our original triangle here and our final triangle here, they are similar because I could use a dilation and then a reflection and a translation to go from my pre-image to my final image. Example one, determine similarity. Are the two figures similar? If so, describe a sequence that maps triangle DEF onto triangle GHI. If they're not, explain why they are not similar. So first, anytime we're trying to figure out if they're similar, they need to be multiplied and have the same scale factor. 
So if I just compare corresponding sides, here's a right angle, here's a right angle. So, so DE must correspond to GH. This is 8 units tall. This is 4 units tall. So 8 over 4 would reduce to 2 over 1, or just 2. If I compare, GI was 6 units, DF is 3. Does that have the same ratio? Yes, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Finally, how about 10 and 5? Do they have the same ratio? That also has 2. Since they have the same scale factor, a dilation must be one of the transformations. It's not the only one, since we didn't expand just going outward. But it is one of the transformations that will help get DEF onto GHI. Once we know that that is one of the... Let's actually do that transformation. So we said it was dilated with a scale factor of 2. So if I start dilating it, D was two, 2 diagonals away, so now it should be 4 units away. This was 3 long, so now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Everything about it has to be twice as large. This was 4, so now it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I should just have to connect my points. So my triangle dilated would look like that. Now how can I get my dilation to go to my final image? I would need to dilate it from the center scale factor of 2, which is what I did followed by a translation that would go 7 units to the right and 3 units down. That would be what I need to do to map DEF onto GHI. Check your understanding. Are the two figures similar? If yes, describe your sequence. If no, why not? Pause the video now and answer both parts. Check your answer. First, yes, they are similar. We should check this side would correspond to this side. 3 compared to 6, it's twice as much. 5.8 times 2 is 11.6, also twice as much. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 compared to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So everything in my final image would be twice as much as my pre-image. It was a scale factor of 2. Please make sure you are checking all the sides. Sometimes they do like to throw in one that is slightly off than the others. Usually you can visually see. However, that's not always the case. Just double check to make sure your scale factors are the same every time. So then how could we get our pre-image mapped onto our image? If we dilate it by a factor of two, then this one would be now four units away. One, two, three, four, five. So this would have to be three, somewhere like way over here, 10 units now. This was three tall, so now it's six. We would end up with our triangle that looks like this. How do we get there? If we translate it left or right, my orientation's not gonna be correct, so I would wanna reflect it over. And I can see I can just do it over the y-axis since this was four units away, and this was also four units away. It must just be a reflection to get it to the correct positioning. Example two, determine similarity. Are these two figures similar? If so, describe a sequence that maps one rectangle onto the other. If not, explain why they're not similar. So again, for similarity, the first thing we should do is compare our corresponding side lengths to make sure that they do follow the same ratio. So this is just rotated up. I can see that my short sides need to compare to my short sides. The short sides are the same, and then my long sides compare with my long sides. So we'll just make sure we're comparing our corresponding sides. So first, let's do our long side. SP is 5 units compared to XY is 7. QR and ZW would have the same ratio since they're also the other long side. Is that the same ratio as our short sides? PQ is 3, ZY is 4. So the same would be for RS to WX. Are those the same fraction, the same ratio? If you're not sure, let's change them to common denominators. So 7 fourths would be out of 28. 3 fourths, I had to multiply this by 7, so 3 times 7 would be 21. I had to multiply this number by 4, so this would be also by 4. 20 out of 28 compared to 21 out of 28. They're very close. However, since they are not exactly equal, 
these would not be similar. So these rectangles are not congruent, they're not the same size, and they are not similar since the dilation did not happen. Check your understanding. Use the picture to help answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. These are not similar. If we check our ratios, so first of all, this shortest side here that's kind of on the diagonal would correspond here with that short side. So AB is 3 compared to HG of 2. So that ratio, 2 thirds. If we compare, let's say, the bottom, this is 5. This is 4. So 4 over 5. If we were checking the sides here, AD would be the same as this, so that would also be 4 fifths. We could do the diagonal. We'll check it if we need to. Are these the same ratio? Let's put it out of 15 so we can compare our fractions. 2 thirds is the same as 10 out of 15. 4 fifths is the same as 12 out of 15. Are they the same ratio? They are not. If we wanted to turn it to a decimal, we could. Two-thirds is the same as 0.6 repeating. Four-fifths is the same as 0 0.8. Not the same decimal. Since they're not the same scale factor, the ratios are different. A dilation did not happen. These two figures are not similar. They may look close. However, mathematically, they are not similar. Let's learn. Similarity. Similar figures have the same shape, but have a different size. The sizes of the two similar figures are related to that scale factor of our dilation. So again, if our scale factor is between 0 and 1, it's going to be smaller. We saw that word was reduction. If the scale factor is exactly equal to 1, it's the same size, there's no change. And if it's greater than 1, it is larger than the original. It's an enlargement. And again, we can use what we see as happening, did it get larger or smaller, to help us determine what sequence of transformations we could use to map one figure onto the other. Example three, identify transformations. Square ABCD is similar to square EFGH. Determine which sequence of transformations maps our square onto the other. Since the figures are similar, which is why I underline that word, it means a dilation has occurred. So first, we know we have to somehow get it to go from one to the other. How do we do that? It started at four, now it's at one. So if we compare each side, they all have a ratio of one to four. All the sides started at four, ended at one. So our dilation would be one fourth. Or in essence, we are dividing by four. Next, let's graph our transformation. So we know that a dilation occurred. So everything needs to get smaller and to get four times closer. So C was one, two, three, four diagonals away. Now it should be one. If I know that one point, this side was four, so now it should be one. This side should now be one. This side should be one. This side should be one. So my dilation is now four times as close and everything is four times smaller. Now that we're here, I can rotate 180 degrees, and C would correspond to point G. So in order to go from my pre-image to my image, I would just need to do a dilation with a factor of one-fourth, and then rotate it 180 degrees clockwise about the origin. Check your understanding. Determine a sequence of transformations to map one triangle onto the other. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So we should first dilate this by a scale factor of 2, then rotate it. Or we could rotate it first and then dilate. So if we do that, first we know it's getting larger, so we need to have a scale factor. Our diagonal side here was, we'll just say two diagonals, that's not the official side length, but now it's four diagonals, so it's twice as large. These two sides were both two, now they're both four, so again, twice as large. If we do that, our dilation then starts here, twice as far, becomes twice as large, it would look like that. Now, 
this point that I'm going with, I want to map it up there. How do I do that? It is a 180 degree rotation about the origin. This point here, 180 would map perfectly onto where X is down here. And then B, if I look going through 180, there's my 180, matches up with my Y. Example four, use the scale factor. Ken enlarges the photo shown by a scale factor of two for his web page. He then enlarges the web page photo by a scale factor of 1.5 to print. The original photo is two inches by three inches. What are the dimensions of the print photo? Are the enlarged photos similar to the original? So first part A, let's find the dimensions. We're gonna start by going to the web page one. It says we multiply by a scale factor of two. So let's multiply each of the dimensions by two. If it originally was two by three, now it's going to be four by six. So our web page photo will now be four inches by six inches. Now that we have our new four by six photo from the web page, we need to multiply that by 1.5 for our print image. So four times 1.5 would be six, six times 1.5 would be nine. Our final photo print will be six inches by nine inches. So again, all I did was multiply by the scale factor that it told me. Next, let's determine if they are similar. So each enlargement was the result of a dilation. So since we just dilated it and then dilated it again, we would be able to map one onto the other just by using dilations. So since we were able to map one onto the other using dilations, and then if we needed to, translations or rotations, etc., we could get one to the other, these photos would be similar, which is good since if they're actually photos, we would want them to be larger and not distorted, which is what would happen if they were not similar. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. The largest print would be 108 centimeters by 135. And then are they similar to the original? Yes, since both were from dilations. So to get this 108, we would start with our 24 and our 30 and enlarge it by 1.5. So 24 times 1.5 would go to 36. 30 to 1.5 would go to 45. Then if we're buying a scale factor of three, 36 times three is 108. 45 times three is 135. So by 1.5, then by three. 